Okay. <clears throat> I apparently can't do hand farts. Hey guys, what's going on? It's the Beard One here. Uh, apologies in advance if my voice is a little hoarse. I literally just woke up. It's about 10 a.m. I just wanted to do this video and get out of the way because I have other things to do today. But with that said, welcome! to the third installment of my Gaming Purchases Showcase, the series where I show you all of the video games and video game related purchases I've made since the last installment. And the last installment was about October, so it's been a while, and we have, uh, we have gotten quite a few more games uh, since then. So, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna run you through everything we've gotten, starting with the big one, because it's pretty big. Check this shit out. See? This is what we got for Christmas this past year. The God of War Legacy Bundled PS3. Which as you can see right there, it's a special edition red PS3 to go with the God of War theme. It comes with all six God of War games, including Ascension. And it's pretty awesome, I must admit. I mean, the packaging is pretty badass, the console itself is really awesome. And I know, I know, we just got this this Christmas. I know we're late to the party. I know the next-gen systems have already come out, but the thing is, we hadn't gotten a PS3. We've always had an Xbox for the last five years, so we hadn't gotten a PS3 up till this point, and we weren't sure what games would be backwards compatible with the PS4 and the Xbox One, so we decided, hey, we might as well skip the PS4 for now, because frankly, there's really no games for it, other than Infamous. And we were just going to get a PS3 and play the games that have already come out over the last seven years and enjoy the fuck out of them, and that's exactly what we did. So yeah, we got that. By the way, PS3, awesome. It's... I'm enjoying it more than the Xbox right now. Maybe it's just because I'm in a phase, but I really like it. So yeah, now I'm just going to run through all the games we got for it. Uh, starting with, obviously, the games that came with the system. Starting with the God of War collection. This is a remastered collection of God of War 1 and 2 for the PS3. Um, ignore that little marker right there that says uh, good for God of War 3 demo voucher. A God of War collection. Um, up until this past year, I had never actually played God of War. Um, I never owned it for the PS2, and I, I never played it. So I thought. Why not get the Legacy Bundle PS3 so I can go through... It comes with all the God of War games, so I can just go through the entire series. So far, I'm still on God of War 1. I kind of got swept up in other games that I was more interested in. But from what I've played so far, it's pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. It's a fun hack and slash beat em kind of game. It's very gory. I like the environments, I like the lore, because it is based on Greek mythology. I like the theme of the games. It's very original, and not a lot of people use this kind of mythology to base their games off of anymore. And uh, I like Kratos. He's a cool character, he's a very relatable character. I like the gameplay, it's very fast, it's very solid. And I just, I'm having fun with it so far, so I'll definitely go back and beat God of War 1 and then 2, and then we'll see where we go from there. I guess I should also mention that the Legacy Bundle came with the Origins Collection, which is the PSP God of War games, remastered for the PS3. So I have those two. Next game up, God of War 3. Since I'm only on God of War 1 right now, I haven't actually played this yet, but I've heard that this is probably the best out of the original series. Yeah, I really don't I really don't have that much to say about this right now, uh, because I haven't actually played it yet. So I'm just gonna uh, give some expectations. I hope I hope that you know it ends the original trilogy on a high note, and that it evolves past the original God of War and adds more mechanics, which it probably will. I mean it is the third game in the series. But that's what I'm hoping from it. Next we have God of War Ascension. Again, well this is the latest in the God of War series. Again, haven't played it, because I'm only at God of War 1. Um, I had, this is a prequel, apparently, uh, for God of War. Join Kratos as he seeks his freedom, redemption, and the clarity to avenge his family in this prequel to the best-selling God of War franchise. 
Experience an epic untold story, enhanced combat mechanics, and all new multiplayer battles. So yeah, there's quite a few different things about this one. It is the latest God of War game. It is a prequel, so it's set before all of the previous games. Apparently, it, it seems like it's going to be an origin story for Kratos, which is interesting. And uh, this is the first mul this is the first uh, God of War game to have multiplayer. And I've seen the multiplayer, and it's really unique. It's like it, they didn't change the gameplay style or anything. It's God of War gameplay, but multiplayer. So it's an online beat 'em up. That sounds pretty cool, and I would be, I would be pretty uh, excited to see this. Good thing that the system actually came with the online pass, so I can actually play it. But yeah, God of War Ascension. I'm looking forward to playing this one. After I get through like six more games. Moving on, we have Heavy Rain. Now, this game is about four years old at this point. It was seen as a system seller when it came out because this game was so new and original and captivating that everyone loved it. We just played it this past Christmas and oh, I can see where people are coming from, let me tell you that much. To me, this is the definitive example of a cinematic experience in gaming. It's like you're playing a fully featured movie. It's literally what it is. There's little to no gameplay in this game. It's mostly all cinematics and quick time events. So it sucks the player in by having it seamlessly blend in with a film type medium. And it's like an interactive film. That's exactly what it is. The story is excellent. It's very well written. There's the horse voice right now. The characters are very relatable, very likable. They are all likable in their own manner. Even the killer is very likable. Graphics for their time are pretty great. I mean, they've gotten better, obviously, but they still look very nice for a four-year-old game. The gameplay itself, nothing to, you know, nothing to write home about. It's your basic kind of point-and-click kind of thing, I guess, is what you would call it. But it's still... It's not meant to be an engrossing game in terms of gameplay. It's meant to engross the player in terms of story, characters, and the dialogue. And that's exactly what it does. So A plus for Heavy Rain, I love this game. Next up we have Infamous, the original Infamous. I started playing this, I was very excited to play this game when I actually got it. I actually got, um, if you can see, I actually got the Infamous Collection. So in like two minutes you'll see where I'm going with that. But yeah, the original Infamous, I was very excited to actually play this game once I figured out we were getting a PS3. Uh, it's funny, I went to go get games for it, and the guy at the counter, he saw that I had a bunch of PS3 games because, you know, new system owner, and he's like, dude, okay, here's what you need. You get a new PS3, right? And I'm like, yeah, you need to get Infamous. It's literally the only reason I bought a PS3 was Infamous, and I'm like, well, yeah, I was planning on getting Infamous because I'm really interested in it, I, just not right now. And he's like, tell you what, I will sell you the Infamous Collection, both Infamous games, 15 bucks. And I'm like, why not? I'm already spending 100 bucks on games, so might as well throw that in there. It's a very unique game. A lot of people define this as a superhero game in which um, the main character, Cole McGrath, um, he gets superpowers in the form of uh, electricity. He has electrical powers. And so that basically means you can use electricity as uh, your uh, as a weapon. Um, you can shoot lightning bolts. You can throw shock grenades. You can hover with electrical currents. You can uh, grind along rails using the electrical currents. So yeah, it's a very fun open world game. It's really uh, fun to parkour around the different buildings. Having electric powers is a very cool thing, especially like things like shock push and the shock grenade. It's basically if you had a full military weapon set along with special electric powers because your standard electric powers are a lot like guns, like you just shoot people with them. But then you get things like the shock push, and it's like, okay, I'm a superhero. I haven't beaten this game yet, but I am having a lot of fun with it, and I do plan to go back to it very soon. Going off that, we have Infamous 2. Again, part of the Infamous collection. I don't have a lot to say about this, since I'm only on the first one, but I've heard this one does add a few cool new things. Um, you know, specifically the back of the box is telling me. There are new powers going off of your uh, already existing electrical powers, and then there are new fire and ice powers, which is a nice progression. There's a whole new area. Apparently it takes place in an entirely new city. Oh, I didn't even know about this. Apparently it has user-created content. People can uh, create their own missions, and they can share them over PSN, and then people can play them. I didn't actually know that was uh, a thing in this game, so that's cool. 
So yeah, new powers, new environment, and user-created content. That's what makes this uh, different from the first one. I'll give you guys my opinion on the Facebook page and the Twitter page once I actually play it. But uh, I have high hopes for this one. Next up, this game was recently featured in the Mega Mystery Unboxing. Here we have the Jack and Daxter collection. If you guys actually watched that video, both Bones and I are big fans of Jack and Daxter. I'm not that big a fan of the original, the Precursor Legacy, mainly because that wasn't the one I predominantly played when I was younger. But um, Jack 2, right there, Jack 2 and Jack 3 are some of my favorite platformers on the PS2. Specifically Jack 3. Once I got a PS3, I'm like, okay. Gotta get the HD collection. And Bones is like, that's a waste of money! We already have them! And I'm like, okay. Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be nostalgic to play one of your favorite childhood games in high definition? And she's like, I don't see the appeal of that! Like, Whatever, I'm buying it anyway. So yeah, Jack and Daxter Collection. Um, HD remix of the original three Jack games. Uh, we played them. Runs beautifully. It looks great in HD. Full widescreen support. No slowdown whatsoever, as far as I can see. And, um, it's just great to play through these games again. I'm currently on Jack 2. But yeah, it's just it's just a great feeling to go back and play something from your childhood in an updated format. So, Jack and Daxter Collection. Good buy for 20 bucks. Next up, we have one of my favorite buys. Journey Collector's Edition. Now, a few years ago, 2012, there was a game, there was an indie game released on PS3 exclusively called Journey. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, if you follow gaming. It looked incredible to me. I don't know why. Being that indie games are a lot more um, emotionally engaging and uh, thought-provoking than most AAA games are nowadays. Journey, it looked beautiful, obviously, from a technical standpoint, but it, uh, the gameplay also looked very interesting. Like, um, it seemed very minimalist. In some way, it seemed, like, captivating. I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, I knew once I got a PS3 I would be very stoked to play this game, and I saw this, 30 bucks new, so I got it, and the cool thing is, Journey is a digital title, it's a download only game, so the cool thing about this physical collector's edition is that it not only comes with Journey, but it comes with that game company's other two games, Flow and Flower. Along with a bunch of other cool things like developer commentaries, the soundtracks, you know, things like that. So 30 bucks new for that? Steal, right? It's, it's awesome. So yeah, I picked this up and I played through all three games. Flow? Definitely the weakest of the bunch. It's not very emotionally engaging or anything like the other two are, but it is a very zen type game in that it is very relaxing with the uh, graphical style and the actual gameplay is very relaxing, as in there's not a whole lot to it. The soundtrack is very smooth and calm and things like that, so it is a very fun game in its own mind. It's just, it just definitely does not compare to the other two. Flower, holy fucking shit, that game is fucking incredible. I definitely plan to play it for the channel eventually. Flower, just, ah, oh, this game is fucking beautiful in every, manner of the word like visually beautiful emotionally beautiful there's just something about the atmosphere that it creates that just drew me in instantly and then of course journey journey i don't know the words to describe journey honestly it's hard to describe journey to ah uh, man um i guess i would say everything Everything I said about Flower, I could say about Journey, too. But the thing is, Journey is much more narratively engaging than Flower is, because the narrative in Journey actually drew me in and kept me interested throughout the entire game. And that's literally the entire purpose of the game is to tell a story through one simple goal. Get to the mountain. And everything that happens from there in the actual journey itself is meant to engage the player in the goal. It may, it's meant to make the player care about the actual goal itself and make them want to reach the mountain through its use of atmosphere and music and other things like that. It's just a beautiful game and I would love to play it again and play it for the channel, hopefully with a co-op partner. This buy, definitely one of the best buys we made for our PS3 collection. Three games, 30 bucks with a bunch of extra content, three beautiful, engaging games. I just love this. Next up we have 
the Ratchet & Clank Collection, another game featured in the Mega Mystery Man Boxing. If you guys watched that video, you'll know that Ratchet & Clank was my favorite series on the PS2. I loved it more than Sly and Jack, even though they were both great series in their own right. I just, I don't know what it was about Ratchet that just hooked me more than the other two. But they were definitely my favorite on the PS2. And I saw this in a bundle with a controller for 30 bucks, and I was like, dude, come on, that's a total steal. We need a second controller, and it's my favorite fucking games on the PS2 in HD, so why not? This collection is very well done. I heard some people say that uh, Idle Minds uh, botched this collection, and sure, there are a few things wrong with it, very, very, very minor things. There are a few visual glitches here and there, like eyelids clipping through models. Ratchet's helmet in the later games, in cutscenes, doesn't actually sit on his head, it kind of floats there. If you can look past small visual glitches like that, the rest of the collection is perfectly ported. Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The games themselves look great in HD, nothing is out of whack. Uh, they all control greatly, just like they did on the PS2. And it's just a great time. I played through all three of them again, and I had a blast. So, Ratchet and Clank Collection, solid buy. Going off of that game, we have Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction, the beginning of the PS3 Ratchet series, known as the Future series. I don't know why they added Future onto the title, but whatever. But yeah, this game's great, but it definitely has, it definitely feels like the original Ratchet game does on the PS2. As in, it's the first game in a series, you know? So it doesn't feel... It isn't as good as the later future games, but it definitely is a great game and it's all mine. As, as Ratchet's first game on the PS3, this game's fucking great. I mean, it looks... outstanding. Like, <clears throat> a lot of the critics, especially on the quotes on the back of the box, a lot of the critics saying it's, it's like a Pixar movie, and I could not... You took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly what this game looks like, especially in the cutscenes. It's like a Pixar movie in a game, which is fucking great. The weapon selection is great. There are a lot of there are a lot of cool, really useful weapons in this game. The story definitely steps up from the previous games, seeing as it is the beginning of a trilogy. You know, <clears throat> it's the beginning of an overarching story. But this first this first arc of the story is very well done. It's a lot more personal than the other games were, focusing on Ratchet and its past, and um, I love this game. It's not as good as some of the other future games, which I'll get to in a moment, but to start Ratchet's career on the PS3, A+. Like, this game is great. Don't, don't skip this game up. This is definitely worth a buy, especially nowadays. Great game, I love playing it, and I would love to play it again, especially for the channel. Going off of that, we have um, my favorite Ratchet & Clank game of all time, and probably my favorite PlayStation 3 game right now. Ratchet & Clank Future, A Crack in Time. Now, this is actually the third installment, the quote-unquote finale of the Future series. What a fucking way to end the Future trilogy, am I right? Like, this game is fucking incredible. Man, they took everything from Tools of Destruction and they improved it so much. They added so much more. Oh, God. Oh. I have to hug it. I have to hug it. Mm. I fucking love this game! Like, oh, God. See, I'm having feels right now because of this game, so I can't, I can't focus on talking about it. But yeah, the story is great. It's the best story in a Ratchet game thus far. The personal feel that Tools Destruction started is, like, amplified in this game. For a platformer, it's very engaging. Uh, it's very personal. It has a lot of feel moments, like gets you right in the heartstrings. Um, the gameplay has improved since Tools of Destruction. I wouldn't say it's more fluid, but it definitely feels different, you know? It feels like they added something to make it control different. The weapon selection is awesome, uh, improved from Tools of Destruction, although a lot of useful weapons from that game carry over to this game, which I'm very thankful for. Clank, oh my god, Clank in this game is fucking awesome. Like, Clank's gameplay in this game is by far the best Clank gameplay that the series will probably ever have. The time-based puzzles where you create multiple clones of yourself. It's fun, it's challenging, it's thought-provoking, it makes you think. 
it's just awesome. Flying around the hub world, flying around your ship is fun. Going to the different planets is fun. Like the different moons in the hub world to collect Zoni and Constructo mods and all that. This game's just fun. Like, <clears throat> this is the most fun I've ever had with a Ratchet game. So, by far, the story, the gameplay, the characters, Clank's gameplay, everything comes together to make this the definitive Ratchet experience. I would say play the other games first so that you, you understand what's going on in this game, but this is definitely the best Ratchet game I've ever played and probably ever will. Insomniac nailed it with that one. Now, going off with that, we have the quote-unquote epilogue of the future series. Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus. Now, I wasn't sure what to expect of this game. For one, it was $30 new, technically a budget title, and it just came out. You can probably see why I was worried about that. I looked this game up and they said it was the epilogue to the future series to um, basically wrap up the story. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect with this game. I honestly didn't. Like, I didn't know what direction they were gonna go with it, especially with the games that they had released prior to this in All for One and Full Frontal Assault. It looked like they were, like, trying something new, and they were trying different gameplay styles with Ratchet that weren't necessarily working out for them. So yeah, when I heard that they were going back, and this was going to be a traditional Ratchet and Clank game, to wrap up the future story, I didn't know what to expect, and then I played it, and I'll be honest, I really enjoyed this game. This game surprised me, like, it is a traditional Ratchet game, but they did change up a few things. For one, um, they changed up the strafing. Uh, in the previous games, you would strafe, and then you would have like, uh, you would have an indicator, like a target on your enemies, and then you would shoot. In this game, it's more like a third-person shooter kind of thing, whereas um, when you strafe, you have an aiming reticle, and you like aim it around like you would a third-person shooter. So it feels more shooter-y than the previous games, with some of its, um, Gameplay change-ups. The story... Eh, like, it's definitely not the best, but it's not the worst. I honestly don't see... I can see why it would be considered an epilogue, because, you know, it's Ratchet coming to terms with what's happened over the last few years, and him making peace with it, but... Eh. Eh, you know. <clears throat> there have definitely been better Ratchet and Clank stories out there. The gameplay is fun. It does feel a little different because of those few change-ups, but it is still very fun. Uh, however, I understand why this game is a budget title, brand new, because it's only four or five hours. So it is a very short game. I, I beat it in one sitting, I think, uh, because I was marathoning through these games. I beat it in one sitting, so it is a very short game, so I can see why it is only $30 new. I think this is third on my list, so it goes Kraken Time, Tools of Destruction, then into the Nexus. Like, I love this game, it is a lot of fun, and, you know, those few change-ups in the gameplay do make it feel fresh from the other games, but, you know, it's definitely not the best the series has ever put out. But I would definitely play this game again, and I will definitely play it for the channel. Now, for Ratchet and Clank fans out there, um, you might have noticed that I skipped the game. No, I didn't. See, the thing about this is, not only is it 30 bucks new because it's so short, but it also comes with a download code for Quest for Booty, which was the, uh, it was the second in the trilogy, and it was the in-between game between Tools of Destruction and A Crack in Time. So yeah, this game, this game is interesting. For one, it's a download-only game, at least when it came out. I think there's, a uh, physical disc versions of it now. But yeah, when it came out, it was a uh, download-only, and a lot of people were like, well, that's interesting. And you can definitely tell why, it's not even a two-hour game. And I have proof. Uh, I will put it up on the screen right now. Uh, last time I played this game all the way through, I had started a stopwatch timer to see how long it actually took me to play this game. And as you can see, the timer isn't even two hours. This game is very short, but it is actually very fun. Granted, it is the weakest in the future series, but the thing is, I can deal with it. Like, it's not meant to be a full-fledged game. It's meant to be something to tie people over before Crack in Time came out. I had a lot of fun with it, actually. Uh, it's definitely different from the other Ratchet games, as in it is a lot more platform-oriented. 
Like, there is very little shooting in this game. In the two hours that this game goes on, there is very little shooting and there is a lot of platforming. So if you're looking for like a platform-centric ratchet game, this is the game you want to go with. Yeah, I actually had fun with this for the two hours that it lasted. And, um, you know, I got it for free with Into the Nexus, so I can't complain. But it is a good game in its own mind. Granted, it is the weakest in the future series. Moving on, we have our last games that were featured in the Mega Mystery Unboxing. We have the Sly Collection. I love Sly Cooper. Now, I love Sly Cooper. And when I got a PS3, I knew definitely one of the things I had to get was the collection and also Thieves in Time. But we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, Sly Collection, much like the Ratchet or Jack collections, it's the original three games remastered in HD. Danzaro did a great job pouring these games. <gasps> Ugh. Ugh. Hanzaro did a great job porting these games. They all run very smoothly. They all look great in HD with widescreen support. Um, and it was very fun to go back and play the original Sly Cooper. Um, because I actually, the last time I played it, I beat it 100%. Which, I very rarely do in a lot of games. I think the last game I uh, completed before that 100% was A Crack in Time because I fucking love that game. But yeah, it was a great experience to go back and play that game again in HD. And I started slide two, I haven't gotten to slide three yet, but I will definitely at some point play these games for the channel because they are some of my greatest childhood memories on the PS2. And going off of that, we have the newest installment in the Sly Cooper series, uh, uh, Thieves in Time. I also, I almost said a crack in time. There seems to be a time theme with these games lately. Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, the latest in the Sly Cooper series. Um, finally, I must say, uh, after an eight-year hiatus, someone finally decided we need a new Sly Cooper game. And unfortunately, it's not Sucker Punch developing this game this time. It's, uh, if you can see there, Sanzaru Games, the people who were uh, responsible for porting the games to the Sly Collection. So they took over development uh, from this game, but they did a very good job. Like, I'm... I think I'm more than halfway through this game, and I am loving it. It's like Sly 2 and Sly 3 brought into the modern era. The gameplay is exactly what you would expect from a Sly game, but there are a few new tweaks and mechanics that make it different, while also making it feel very familiar. For one thing, it brings back the open world style gameplay from Sly 2 and 3. Sly, Bentley, and Murray are all playable, except this time, at a certain point in the game, Carmelita becomes a fully playable character. Like, at any point you want, you can play as Carmelita, which is cool. Um, the big thing about this game, seeing as it is a time travel game, is that you get to go back in time and interact with Sly's ancestors, which make for a lot of great story moments and a lot of quirky uh, dialogue, which the series is known for. But you can also play as them! You, in each chapter you meet a different relative and you can play as that Cooper relative. A lot of these are mentioned in previous uh, games. You have Tennessee Kid Cooper, you have uh, Ryuichi Cooper, uh, Sir Gallif Cooper, you know, and you meet them and you can play as them and they each have their own unique abilities that make them different from Sly. The environments are a lot bigger. But yeah, there's a lot of variety in this game. It's very fun. It's very reminiscent of the old Sly games while also doing something new to make it seem fresh. And Sanzaro, Sanzaro did a great job with this game. If they do make another Sly game, which... Cliffhanger ending. If they do end up making another Sly game, I will more than welcome that, because they did a great job with this. We're almost done here, we only have a few more games left. And I haven't really played any of these games. These are more Boneses uh, category, so I won't have a lot to say in this. So we'll, we'll wrap this up in a few minutes. But here we have... The Last of Us. Just came out this past year, critics were raving about this game, like, it's a masterpiece, it's an emotional masterpiece, it's a visual masterpiece. Just overall, they're saying masterpiece, masterpiece, masterpiece. If you've been watching Peter Banter over the last year, you'll know that uh, Random Richard, Riley, my co-host, uh, wasn't too fond of this game when, it first, uh, when he first played it. See, he tended to get more into it as the game progressed, and then by the end of the game, he did end up liking it. And I can see why. This game is very slow. The game is meant to be taken in by the player, and they aren't meant to just rush through the game. It is very slow paced, it is very methodical, but um, from what I've seen, 
it does look very fun. Obviously, uh, supplies are a very big thing in this game. You have little supplies and little ammo. Uh, so you have to find different ways to take out your enemies. This game focuses a lot on stealth. From what I saw Bones play, it is very emotionally driven. Like in the first five, ten minutes, they're already tugging at your heartstrings. I'm sure a lot of you cried in that first ten minutes. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly, people who have played this game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You probably cried. I'm not judging. You probably cried. It looks very interesting. Um, it's made by Naughty Dog, obviously, so it can't be bad, right? But, um... I haven't played it yet, but I've seen Bones play it, and I will definitely play this and let you guys know what I think, and if it lives up to the hype. Lastly, uh, I don't have much to say about these games, and the camera is dying, so I'm just gonna blast through these. Uncharted. Again, made by Naughty Dog. This was the first uh, Naughty Dog game post Jack and Daxter, so and the first Naughty Dog game on the PS3, so a lot of people were expecting a lot out of this game, and they got it. Like, Uncharted is nowadays known as one of the greatest series in PlayStation history. That's what Naughty Dog does, man. But yeah, I haven't played these games. Bones has, but um, from what I've seen, it is very beautiful, it's a very good looking game. The gameplay, it looks very fun. It's like a mixture between Tomb Raider style platforming and third person shooting. Um, this game is very, very hard, especially in the later parts of the game. Bones was playing it on easy, and even on easy she was having a hard time, so I'm like, okay, give him the controller. And I tried playing it, granted this is like right near the end of the game, and fuck, it was difficult. This game is very challenging, so if you're looking for a challenge, go pick this up. Um, it controls well, it plays well, uh, it looks very nice. Uh, the character is Nathan Drake. I don't even have to say anything about him, he's awesome. Um, the story is very well written, and um, it's just a blast to play. So, Uncharted. Now these two games, Bones has played a little bit of uh, this one, Uncharted 2, but neither of us have played Uncharted 3 yet. So I'm just gonna uh, zoom through these games really quick. I've heard that Uncharted 2 is probably the best in the series and probably one of the best PS3 games ever made. I played it a little bit at Raleigh's house. Uh, I played like the first hour or so of it, so I haven't really gotten into it too much to um, warrant that. But um, yeah, these can these games are known as some of the best in PlayStation history for a reason. Naughty Dog knows how to make a game, especially after Jack and Daxter. They know how to make a game that's narrative driven, that has very likable characters, that has very solid gameplay. Yeah, I can't wait to play these games, even though I haven't played them yet. I do look forward to playing through Uncharted 1 and then playing through these two games to round off the trilogy, especially since they just recently announced uh, Uncharted for the PS4. You know, that's a big step up. They're going to the next system. Um, well, The Last of Us is getting remastered for PS4. So, uh, <clears throat> I've been a Naughty Dog fan all my life, and I look forward to playing the series and seeing exactly what it has to offer, and if the kind words that everyone uh, places on these games uh, is true, and um, if it lives up to the hype. So yeah, that's it guys for this installment of the Gaming Purchases Showcase. We had a lot to go through. I'm just going to quickly recap everything that I've shown you in this next minute. God of War Legacy PlayStation 3 Bundle, God of War Collection, God of War Origins Collection, God of War 3, God of War Ascension, Heavy Rain, Infamous, Infamous 2, The Jack and Daxter Collection, Journey, Collector's Edition, The Ratchet and Clank Collection, Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction, Ratchet and Clank Future A Crack in Time, Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus, Ratchet and Clank Future A Quest for Booty, the Sly Collection, Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, The Last of Us, Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2, Among Thieves, and finally, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. So yeah, guys, Ugh. So yeah, guys, that wraps up this installment of the Gaming Purchases Showcase. As you can see, with a new system, there were a lot of games to show off, and this doesn't even cover half of it. There's still the digital games that we got, that are actually on the PS3 system itself. So this is just the tip of the iceberg, but for a new PS3 owner, I think I had a pretty good head start uh, when it comes to games. So yeah, I'm loving my PS3, I'm loving the games on it. It's quickly become one of my favorite systems of the, uh, I guess you could say the last generation now. But yeah, great games, great exclusive games, just great content overall. Makes me love this system to death. And, um, 
My love for Sony has rekindled since the PS2, especially since being uh, primarily an Xbox uh, user for the last five years. I'm glad I got this, I'm glad I got the games that I got, I'm loving the hell out of the PS3, and I just showed you a shitload of games that I got for it, so that wraps up this installment of the Gaming Purchases Showcase. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, the camera's almost going on 50 minutes, who knows how heavily I'll edit this, but um, yeah, that wraps things up here, so I'm gonna go and start editing this video because I have other things to do today, so I'm the bearded one. With me is my bundle of PS3 games. There's a lot of them. I will bid you adieu. Keep on gaming. <laughs>